Aloha everybody, my name is Mark Faldo and I'm with Premier Benefit Consultants. We're an independent agency representing multiple Medicare programs here in the state. We offer the widest array of offerings in terms of Medicare plans. Today I'd like to share some general information regarding Medicare. This should help you get familiar with the parts of Medicare eligibility and how to eventually complete your Medicare coverage. So the agenda today, we're going to be talking about what Medicare is, how you qualify for it, what do you need to do to enroll into Medicare, the parts of Medicare and what's missing. And then since there's some things missing, what do you need to do to complete it? We call this Medicare Basics. So Medicare is a federal health insurance program that we all pay for as taxpaying citizens here in the U.S. We contribute by paying into a payroll tax system and it's also funded by general tax revenues. How to qualify for Medicare? Well, there's several ways of qualifying for Medicare. More commonly, you are a citizen or permanent resident of the U.S. and you have worked at least 10 years or 40 quarters and paying into the tax system for that amount. You also need to be turning age 65. Okay? As we pay our taxes, those taxes head to several places, including two buckets meant for us later in life. One, Social Security, a form of a pension. This here is a health insurance plan by our federal government called Medicare. Okay? There are others that do qualify to participate in Medicare. Those younger than 65 suffering from a disabling injury and as they collect what is called Social Security Security um, Disability Insurance, Supplemental Security Disability Insurance, if they collect that for 24 months on the 25th month, no matter their age, they are able to participate in Medicare. Others that may be younger than 65 suffer from ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease or end-stage renal disease, which is kidney failure requiring dialysis. However, many of us will have to wait till we turn 65 to participate. There are three common enrollment periods that you should be aware of. The very first and most common is called the initial enrollment period. This is a seven month window that starts three months prior to your 65th birthday month. It includes your 65th birthday month and ends three months later. During this period, you can go ahead and file to get Medicare started. Now there are two ways of doing this, automatic and actually some, another way that you need to take action. The automatic way is that you're collecting Social Security prior to this IEP or your initial enrollment period. If you are collecting Social Security, you really don't need to file or lift a finger. Your Medicare card will be mailed to you automatically around three months prior to your 65th birthday month. If you're not collecting Social Security though, you actually do need to take some action and file for Medicare. A couple of ways of doing that would be you go online at medicare.gov. Uh, on that website, you'll be able to click on a sign up here button, which is on the top left corner. When you click on that button, it'll take you to a social security website. Well, they'll ask you to go ahead and formulate a social security account prior to you formulating the Medicare application. Okay? The other way of doing it is you may want to call social security. That's 1-800-772-1213. And when you call, this is a two-call process, they'll ask to set up a downline appointment with you where they'll call you back and go through the Medicare application uh, over the phone. The third way, unfortunately, is not really available right now. It's actually by going down to Social Security. Hopefully sometime soon, their offices will be back open and we'll be able to go down to Social Security and file for Medicare. And okay, now once you file for Medicare, uh, you're gonna be asked a couple of questions. One in particular is pretty important. Would you like both parts of Medicare, Part A and B, or would you just like Part A? The reason for this question is that Part A of Medicare is the part that comes with no premium. It covers hospitalization, which we'll go ahead and get into in just a little while. And Part B of Medicare is the part of Medicare that comes with a monthly premium. The reason for this question is sometimes people are working past 65 and they have insurance from their, health, uh, from their employer and don't need any more health insurance at that time. It's at this point where they go ahead and say, well, I'm going to want to defer Part B at this point and I'll pick that up down line um, when I retire. Okay? So very important question that you're going to be asked, do you want A and B? Now, if you do defer Part B, 
uh, and you do have employer coverage or some type of creditable coverage, which means just as good or better than Medicare, you avoid Medicare penalties. Medicare penalties occur when somebody does not have some type of medical or drug coverage after becoming Medicare eligible. They've deferred Medicare or maybe they just haven't filed for Medicare. Uh, they can get Medicare down line, but then they'll be asked when they receive Medicare, what happened over that period? If your answer is, well, I really didn't have any creditable coverage, that then uh, leads you to Medicare penalty, something you want to stay away from. The second enrollment period called special enrollment period will avoid those penalties. You defer part B while still covering, covered by an employer group health plan, active group health plan. And during that period, you can turn on and ask for Medicare uh, part B or A and B without fear of being penalized, right? This is called a special enrollment period or SEP, and it can be used uh, either while you're still working, while you're still covered by that employer plan, or any time within an eight-month period after your employment or your employer health plan has come to an end. If you do it that way, you will avoid Medicare penalties, right? Let's say, though, that you totally forgot to go ahead and file for Medicare and you went without Medicare for a period of time. Uh, then you so certainly remember, okay, I need some health insurance. At that point, you need to then invoke what is called the GEP, the General Enrollment Period. Uh, this period, though, of the year only happens during the first quarter, between January 1st to March 31st. And when you invoke filing for Medicare during the GEP, what happens is you can go ahead and file during the first quarter, but then your Medicare coverage doesn't even begin to the following July. Now, all that time, time is going on, and as soon as you get Medicare in July, they'll ask you again what happened between July and the time in which you should have had it. And if you're, again, your answer is, well, I didn't have anything, that's when penalties occur. So they really, really want to go ahead and try to avoid utilizing the GEP. These are the three most common enrollment periods within Medicare. So let's talk about Medicare. This card that you're seeing is called Original Medicare. Sometimes it's referred to as Traditional Medicare or even just the red, white, and blue card. It has several parts on it. You'll have your name on it and a bunch of letters and numbers that's meaningless to anyone else. That's your Medicare claim number, okay? So part A, again, is the part of Medicare that we says come with no monthly premium. Once you qualify, it helps you with your inpatient services such as staying at a hospital, if you needed a skilled nursing facility, home health care or hospice benefits are all covered by Part A, right? Although we don't pay a monthly premium, we do share in the co-payments, co-insurance and deductibles that Part A will leave for us. So as an example, in the year 2020, if I went into a hospital and stayed there with just this card, the first thing that Medicare will ask me this year would be to pay the first $1,408 deductible. And then Medicare will help me to help pay for that hospitalization stay. Okay? So that's part A, our inpatient coverage. Part B then is for our outpatient services. We left a line up there as to how much part B costs because that's a varying number. Two things affect how much people pay for part B on a monthly basis. Number one, our government. Every year our government can and has changed the monthly rates for part B. This year in 2020, that base rate is $144.60. The other thing that affects how much someone may pay for Part B is their income. What the government does is go back two years on anyone who's already participating in Part B or coming up to eligibility, and they'll look at your tax returns from two years ago. They'll identify one number in your tax return called the Modified Adjusted Gross Income. If that number is more this year, then $84,000, uh, or if you file jointly and that number is more than $174,000, you may pay more than the base rate of $144.60. This is what is called an IRMA, or I-R-M-A-A, -A, an income-related monthly adjusted amount, an increase based on what happened in your tax returns two years ago. And they recalculate this every single year. Okay, now that we know how much Part B costs, let's talk about what it does. We said that it's covering your outpatient services, such as doctor office visits, blood tests, x-ray, durable medical equipment, 
all other sorts of medical services are covered. If it's not covered under A, it'll be found here under B. And as A does, B also has a deductible. This one, though, a very smaller deductible of $198 in the year 2020. Once clearing that, Part B stands ready to go ahead and help you with 80% of the cost of your services. You'll be asked for coinsurance of 20%. Okay? So again, typically, Part B it will help you with your outpatient services. Uh, there may be a period where you might actually have to pay more for not only B, but also D, which we'll get into as well. That IRMA, or Income Related Monthly Adjusted Schedule, uh, relates to not only medical, but drug coverage as well. Okay, so now that we know what Medicare A and B does, let's tell you what it doesn't do. 56 years in the making and Medicare was never created to help you cover some of these things like routine eye exams or monies for eyewear. It doesn't help you with dental benefits, doesn't help you with hearing exams or hearing aids, long-term care stays, as well as medication. There is no medication coverage built into that red, white, and blue card. So it's really meaningless of building or bringing that red, white, and blue card to your pharmacy. It doesn't really do anything, right? Having said all of that, how are people adding things to Medicare once they become Medicare eligible to complete your Medicare coverage? These three things that you see on the screen are available through private insurance companies, not our federal government, right? And we'll be talking about each one of these individually. There's prescription drug coverage plans, what they call supplement plans, and advantage plans as well. Kind of looks like this. Okay? It all starts with having original Medicare and then you can add to original Medicare once you have it. There are two ways of doing this, either adding a drug plan and a supplement plan or an advantage plan. But the point I'm trying to make is you can't get everything at one time. It's one way or the other. Okay? So the, to begin, people can add what is called Part D. This is for drug coverage, known as a PDP or prescription drug plan. People buy these things from private insurance companies. Average rates go from anywhere from $20 to about $70 per month of premium. And the insurance company that you purchase this drug plan for will give you a card. That card is what you would take to your pharmacy. And based on what you're picking up, either generic or brand, there'll be a certain copay. Okay? Now, if you wanted to stop adding things here to Medicare, you absolutely could. You have creditable medical and drug coverage, really no more penalties that you have to worry about. However, some people want something that helps them with those deductibles we mentioned and coinsurance of 20%. They can then, as an option, add what is called a supplement plan. These plans aim to do one thing, to help you pick up what's left over in costs by original Medicare. Okay. So they help to pay for some or all of the costs that are left over by Medicare. And generally speaking, if these benefits like routine eye exam or dental are not covered by original Medicare, neither will it be given by your Medicare supplement plan. They only do that one thing and help you absorb costs that are left over by original Medicare. Okay? So that was one way of completing your Medicare coverage. The other way, is by participating in a Medicare Advantage plan, also known as Part C. Medicare Advantage came about in 1998, and it's really a way of you, a Medicare beneficiary, working with a private insurance company to be the entity that delivers your Medicare benefits. So that was a real long definition. Let me just break that down. What happens here is that if you join a Medicare Advantage plan, what happens is original Medicare will go ahead and fund that insurance company per member per month every month that you are attached to that Medicare Advantage plan. They pay that Medicare Advantage insurance company a monthly amount. It then becomes that insurance company's responsibility to then deliver you your Medicare benefits. In other words, what happens is although you do have two cards, you're thinking should be that all the powers and benefits that are wrapped up in your original Medicare card are now transposed into your Medicare Advantage plan card. And when you visit your doctors or hospitals, instead of showing your red, white, and blue card, you would bring out your Medicare Advantage card. Seeing that card, your doctors would go ahead and work with your health insurance company versus 
Original Medicare. It's a way of Original Medicare outsourcing the delivery of their benefits. Created in 1998, participants receive their Medicare covered health benefits and other health benefits uh, through private insurance companies. Again, it pays your providers instead of Original Medicare and must cover all Original Medicare benefits. That's important for you to know because you risk losing no Original Medicare benefits by participating in a Medicare Advantage plan. These plans must deliver everything that Original Medicare delivers. However, many of these companies would love for you to join their plan. And they know they can't give you any less, but they can always give you more. A common example may be, hey, Mark, please join our Medicare Advantage plan and we'll throw in there a gym membership for you. So obviously you don't get gym membership from having Original Medicare. Uh, however, many of the Medicare Advantage plans have these ancillary or additional benefits uh, in addition to your Medicare benefits that they throw in. A more important example may be join our Medicare Advantage plan and we won't only deliver you parts A, hospital, part B, medical, but we'll also deliver part D, drug benefits as well. So in one card, sit your A, B, and D benefits all in one place. Remember, you don't get drug coverage from Medicare, but you certainly can through your Part C Medicare Advantage plans. Okay. How much do these plans cost? Here in Hawaii, you can find that these plans start at $0 a month. Right? You can get one of these for $0 per month. And there is absolutely a range depending on what makes a plan right for a person. You absolutely could choose a plan with a premium. Okay? Nowadays, some of the additional benefits include things like dental, vision, hearing, out-of-pocket maximum, and even coverage outside the United States. So it goes and works beyond the shores of the U.S., right? With all of these plans available to us, I'd like to share just a little bit about what things I think you should be considering when deciding which plan you probably want to join, okay? Here's a few things to consider. Some of these plans fall in the PPO or HMO process. PPO standing for Preferred Provider Organization, HMO Health Maintenance Organization. So when you think of HMO plans, these are plans that allow you only to see doctors that participate with that insurance plan, right? PPO plans, Preferred Provider Organization, allow you to see doctors both in and out of that network. Okay? Just two different types of plans that are available, okay? One of the most important questions that you probably want to ask is, are my doctors participated with the plan that I'm trying to uh, get myself into? Uh, makes no use if your doctors say, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but you chose an insurance company that I do not take, right? So you're gonna to wanna to do some homework first and ask your doctors, what of these Medicare Advantage plans do you participate in? Uh, is it important for you to have coverage when you're traveling? Some of these plans actually help you uh, easier when abroad from Hawaii. You might be in a uh, national uh, on the continental United States and how the plan helps you away from Hawaii would matter. Even internationally as well. Uh, some of these plans help you when you're away from the continental United States, right? Every one of these plans have its own list of covered medication called a drug formulary. Those of you who are on maintenance medication may want to make sure that the drugs in which you are taking are covered on the plan of choice, right? And then finally, there are some people uh, within our audience that have retired from unions such as state or city and county of Honolulu uh, retirees. These are folks that have access to a retirement health benefit. Sometimes these types of benefits don't commingle well with a Medicare Advantage plan. And so you just really want to be careful about whether or not it should be uh, added to your coverage. You do have that option, but many times we would tell you, hey, it might not be the best thing to do by adding a Medicare Advantage plan to the mix of coverage that you have. On the other hand, there are groups of people that actually absolutely can add these plans and it really does help enhance their benefits. These folks fall in the veterans categories, TRICARE for Life, or even federal retirees. There's a little bit of difference between each category of person, okay? Having said all of that, again, we're just gonna 
summarize by saying that once you get original Medicare, now that you know how to receive it, what helps make you eligible and what it does, now that you uh, have knowledge of that, you'll know what you can add to original Medicare. I'd like to also conclude by saying that Medicare is flexible. Every single year, Medicare allows a period that allows you to go ahead and change or stay with the plans in which you have. It's called Medicare Annual Enrollment Period, which actually happens October 15th through December 7th every year. So your decisions really are just for one year because you can in fact change that year over year. Again, my name is Mark. I work for Premier Benefit Consultants. We represent all of these companies that you see on the screen, HMSA, United Healthcare, Humana, Ohana Health Plan, and Aloha Care. We are HMSA's exclusive, exclusive partner when it comes to Medicare Advantage plans. If I ever have the honor of helping you, please don't ever expect a bill from me as the companies in which we represent pay me, and they pay me equally. So we'll be there to go ahead and unbiasedly shop for whatever Medicare plan may be best suited for you, okay? Thank you very much. Aloha and mahalo.